Hi guys, it's France. Welcome to Journal on Monday, week 116. Again, I'm working in my handmade art journal, made of filled with heavy watercolor paper, and I'm starting with some light paste from Finovar over a very dirty stencil, and that's totally okay. Just in a thin layer, randomly on the spread. And while this is drying, I'm applying a strip of masking tape in the middle to avoid having all the liquids that I will apply seeping through my whole book. Meanwhile, the paste is dried and I can go in with some color. These are the silks from Color Art, which is an acrylic glazing. I'm first applying some water and then randomly applying the three colors that I want to use for my base. I'm going for a monochromatic gray, combined with rust, of course, but I also want some very light uh, tints of other colors seeping through. So I'm blending using more water and then adding more color again uh, with the silks. If you want the full details on the colors that I'm using, hop over to my blog. The link is in the description of the video where you'll find the complete list of ingredients. Now, while I'm heat setting it, I'm adding some more uh, Radiant Rain from Color Art. Almost in the same colors, but not exactly. Just to blend it some more and add some more shading to it. Now that that first layer is dry, I'm adding some more of the silks, but this time without the water. But in a very thin layer again. And then quickly heat setting it before I go in with a wash. So I'm taking some uh, Finovar heavy white gesso. And what I like about the heavy gesso is that with one jar you can create the texture that you want just by adding a bit of water. So in this case I want a very thin down gesso. So I'm adding quite some water to it just to blend and soften down that first layer of color that I have in the background. And as the silks and Radiant Rain are acrylic based, they won't blend with the gesso, so they are permanent. And then again, quickly drying it. I want some more of that shiny grey, so I'm going back in with the Radiant Rain, um, and this is the pewter one. So it's a metallic version. And now I can go for that finishing touch that I was waiting for, which I want to do with pen pastel. So I'm mixing up several shades of gray using a big sponge. This is a soft tool. And yes, I'm going from very dark to very light. I will even end up adding some white to it. But I'm really taking care of blending everything. So every time I'm cleaning my sponge to make sure I don't have any residue of the other colors before uh, blending. And then I soften the, edge, the edges of each color into the other one. 
and as I'm having fun I'm going a bit more wild with the colors that I'm adding so I'm also adding uh, some other tints that I didn't think of in the first place Now on top of my pen pastel I need some fixative and as I'm too lazy to go outside I'm using Color Arts Radiant Rain and this is the, let me check, um, this is a pearl, one of the pearl versions. So no color, just a bit of blink and it will uh, act as a fixative. This is one of my new stamps um, that I designed for a stamp boutique and I'm stamping it using embossing ink as I want to add some embossing powder. I want to make those two pages look like they're hinged to one another. And now I can spread my embossing powder on top of it. using a soft uh, paintbrush to take the excess powder away as I don't want it to melt it just randomly on uh, my paper. And then I'm going in with the heat gun. Once that part is melted I can add some more um, embossing powder and this time I'm using another one of my new stamps. This is the cracks one which I'm stamping on top of the other cracks that I applied with texture paste to really have some more of it. And now I'm gonna mix up two uh, several colors of embossing powder. So first I'm applying one of the colors Taking the excess back into the jar and now I'm going in with the other color, doing the same thing. And now to make sure all the embossing, powder, uh, embossing ink is covered up, I'm adding some more of the first color. And now again, I can melt everything, but before I do that, I take the excess away and I'm also softening the edges of my stamping. My stamp is a rectangle. I don't want my stamping, stamping to be um, all straight. Once it's melted, I leave it to cool down, so I'm not touching it directly. And now I can add some more uh, cracks stamping directly on the rest of the spread. And to do so, I'm using Donna Salazar's um, mixed media inks. And no, the camera doesn't really show it, but I can assure you there is some stamping on the paper. Quickly heat setting it as it's not a permanent ink and I'm working on a bit of a complicated surface. And now that the embossing powder is cooled down, I can take the excess away. I want to add some more stamping, so I'm taking another one of my stamp boutique stamps. This is my Ticket to Paris, and I just want to add those numbers right where it's the hardest to stamp. Why make it easy on yourself? And now I can go for my focal elements. These are all papers that I used underneath rusting metal. And this is not from, from just one metal that has been rusted. It's used over and over again until it's completely saturated with the rust. Um, the recipe, well, what I use to rust my metal, you will find it on my website 
under the tab Inspiration and Free Tutorials. So first you go to Inspiration and then you go to Free Tutorials and that's where you'll find the recipe, well my, my recipe to rusting metal. There are several ways of doing it. Um, I'm also using several kinds of papers so that I have different textures um, one on top of the other. I sewed the pieces together and now I'm adding some uh, soft matte gel again from Finovart just to glue it down. And then adding my word, which is, this is just a Tim Holtz chit chat sticker. Now on the other side, I want to go a bit more crazy. So first I'm punching some holes which is easier when you take your punch in the right direction instead of upside down. And now I want to mark these holes a bit more by burning them. And as I don't want to burn my whole book, I'm using a technique that I've seen um, in several YouTube videos. So I couldn't say who taught me this first, but this is how you do, you do it. Now be careful if you do it. I'm, generally not doing this inside I just did it with one hole to show it to you and I can assure you that as an encaustic painter I have a fire extinguisher in my scrap room now hold your horses I thought my camera was rolling and it was not when I came back in after burning the holes I added some more of that brown rusted paper on the back side of the holes and then I glued the two uh, spreads together so that that brown paper would stay in place. And then again, I added some sewing on the other side as well to match it with the left side. Before I say goodbye, I just wanted to mention that I'm having a giveaway on my Facebook page where you can win some of those new stamps of mine. Um, don't forget to hit the like button if you liked today's page. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope to see you back next time. Have a good one. Ta-da!